Welcome to this tutorial. We'll explore how to design adaptable interfaces using breakpoints in order to make sure your interactive UI is displayed correctly, regardless of the device or screen size. We'll walk you through the steps on how to optimize your UI and how to set up responsive, floating UI for any display. Let's dive in and get started. Let's switch to preview mode and check how our floating UI performs in this project. You'll notice that the UI works well with this display ratio, so no adjustments are needed. Now, we'll exit preview mode and full screen mode, then resize the browser window. This is the easiest way to see how your project will appear on other devices, like mobile. When we reopen the preview mode, you'll notice that the floating UI overlaps the objects in the scene, which creates a poor viewing experience on mobile devices. To fix this, we'll create a separate UI specifically for mobile. Let's go back to full screen mode. Now duplicate the current floating UI. While it's not strictly necessary, changing the UI type to docked in the properties works very well in this situation. It assigns a distinct space for the UI, positioning it next to the 3D canvas instead of overlapping it. This adjustment improves interactions with 3D objects as they won't intersect with the UI when the camera view changes. Next, we'll position the UI at the bottom and keep the layout height set to hug so it adapts to the size of the elements inside it. Before we enter preview mode again, ensure only one UI is visible. Docked UIs are suitable for desktop, tablet, or mobile devices. Now, let's resize the browser window again. Open the preview mode and you'll see that the UI elements are not overlapping with the object. The docked UI will also adjust to the width if you resize the browser window. The UI is responsive and the object remains focused, so there's no need for additional cameras. Once done, exit preview mode and return to full screen. In the next steps, we'll create interactions so the correct UI is displayed based on the screen size while hiding the others. This is done using the breakpoints condition. First, open the interact mode, create a new interaction, and rename it. Then add the onload trigger, which activates the interaction when the project is loaded. Now, let's add a breakpoint condition. This feature, allows interactions to be triggered based on screen size. You can choose between height and width, define if the size is greater or smaller, and set the target resolution. For this condition, we'll set the interaction to trigger if the screen width is 767 pixels or less, meaning it will be activated on mobile devices. We'll keep the desktop UI visible by default and hide at the docked UI, which we'll use for mobile devices. Next, we'll add a visibility action to the interaction to display the docked UI. Add a visibility action and adjust its settings. Set it to show the docked UI when triggered. Let's take a look at the whole interaction. It means that on load, if the screen width is 767 pixels or less, the docked UI for mobile will appear. Next, we'll add an action to hide the floating UI. To do this, create a new visibility action and set it to hide for the floating UI. This step ensures that when the project is loaded on mobile devices, the floating UI is automatically hidden. Finally, open preview mode to test the interaction. We've now successfully created a fully responsive floating UI that adapts to both mobile and desktop screens with just a single interaction. This creates a smooth and optimized user experience across devices. Breakpoints can be used for many different purposes. Next, we'll show you a few example projects and explain how we applied breakpoints. First, we have the robotic arm scene. It features two floating UIs one for mobile and one for desktop. The interaction is almost the same as we did in the previous project. Additionally, we've set up different cameras to ensure the right focus on animations for each device so that the user experience is tailored to the specific screen size. 
This allows the scene to remain clear and interactive no matter the device used. In this oil filter scene, we've added different interaction triggers for mobile and desktop. On desktop, we use while hovering trigger, while on mobile, we've set up on-click triggers. There are also hotspots in the mobile version of the project. These let the mobile users easily access key details without needing precise pointer control. Lastly, in this bike gear scene, we have three UIs, one for mobile, one for tablet, and one for desktop. Using breakpoints, we've set the tablet UI to trigger between 767 and 920 pixels, so that each device type has a tailored interface for an optimal experience. This approach allows us to fine-tune how the UI behaves on various screen sizes, preventing overlap and making sure that key elements are always clearly visible and accessible. We hope this tutorial will help you create responsive UIs for a great user experience that works seamlessly across all devices. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. See you in the next one.